as the government continues to thrash out the terms of Brexit with the EU, they are paving the way back here at home for the possibility of no deal. The Trade and Customs Bill, more details of which will be released later on today, is going to transfer the EU's current trading deals over to the UK and allow for the UK to make our own free trade agreements. Well, to talk more about this, the International Trade Secretary, Liam Fox, joins me now from Westminster. Good morning to you, Mr Fox. Good morning. Explain some of the details of this Trade and Customs Bill then. How's it going to work? Well, they are in fact two separate bills as the Trade Bill and the Customs Bill. The purpose of them is to give some certainty and predictability to business, both UK businesses and our trading partners abroad as we leave the European Union. What it does is it replicates the agreements that the European Union has with other countries, countries like Switzerland or South Korea, so that we can take them into UK law, so that at the point we leave the European Union, there's no disruption to trade. Businesses have been asking us to give them greater predictability and greater certainty, including the CBI yesterday, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, they want more certainty, but also a lot of people that voted for Brexit voted on the premise of taking back greater control. This just sounds a bit like a cut and paste job. Well, uh, if it were simply a cut and paste job, my life would be a lot easier than it is. There are a number of things within it that can't simply be uh, cut and pasted. Uh, we have, for example, a number of quotas with the EU which we have to divide up. Uh, into the 28 countries to make sure that everybody is taking a fair share. That's an agreement that uh, we're currently working on. Uh, and we have to set up a new trade remedies authority so that British businesses won't be subjected to dumping or, or unfair subsidy from abroad. So that's why we have to take the legislative powers to do it. And that's why we can't simply, from the powers we already have, do this cut and paste exercise. Those who uh, use that phrase, and I've heard some politicians in the opposition use it, don't seem to quite grasp the complexities. Okay, well it is much more complicated then, as you said, and this is how complicated it's going to be, because on the one hand, to continue trading with the EU, as we do now, you're going to have to keep them happy and maintain the high standards. But you also want to forge new trade deals with the likes of America, who, mm. let's face it, on certain aspects have slightly lower standards than the EU. I mean, you've got Wilbur Ross, the US Commerce Secretary, speaking yesterday at the CBI conference, talking about, and I hate to mention it, because I know you don't like talking about it, chlorinated chicken. He said that there would be problems if the UK retained the current EU-wide bans on chlorinated chicken and genetically modified food. Now, this is a perfect example of trying to keep the EU happy and new trade partners happy. And you're not going to be able to do that, are you? Well, we've made very clear that we don't see a drop in British standards as being something that we would want to see because British consumers wouldn't want to see that. Uh, in terms of environmental standards, of quality and safety of our products, uh, in terms of workers' rights, for example, being another element of that, which is why we've actually transposed all of those in our EU withdrawal bill to show that we want continuity of the, the rights and standards we built in over the last few decades. So uh, they're not for negotiation. However, when we get into other items, then uh, when different commodities are being discussed, obviously we'll look at those, but it's, a, it's an agreement. We wouldn't agree to something that we didn't think that the British public would actually back or, or would be good for them. Okay, so just to, just to clarify, I'm going to use chlorinated chicken as one example. Let's, let's just pick that out. How do you keep the United States happy? Because they are saying with the current EU ban, they wouldn't be able to trade with you on something like that. So that is an example of an obstacle you're going to face. How are you going to overcome it? Well, with all due respect, there are far more important things that we'll worry about, about well, things no, there like are financial... far more important things, but I'm just using that no. as an example, because that is what the US Commerce Secretary has used as an example. So let's sure. stick with that. Well, I don't, I don't think that's going to be the sticking point in any agreement. We'll be looking at the, the most important issues. For example, what can we do in terms of financial services? What can we do in terms of the defence industry and removing some of the uh, additional costs that we face? And can we get better liberalisation there? Then we'll work our way down to other issues. Okay. It will all be part of a package, and we'll want to see what we can give and what we can take. But as I say, there will be no reduction in standards because consumers will want to have a greater say in future agreements. The current legislation that we're setting out doesn't in fact set out the mechanism for consultations okay. on that. We want to do a separate exercise on that because we want to build public confidence on how we would consult over any future trade agreements rather than today's legislation which is simply technically replicating what we have already so that at the point we leave the EU we don't have any disruption. We want to look at those future 
trading agreements later on. I've already spoken to the, the Welsh and Scottish and Northern Ireland governments about how we might approach that, and we'll okay. want to do that in a spirit of collaboration and wider consultation okay, well with the British public. Well, we will have more details on the trade bill and the customs bill a little later on today.